All right, new this morning, the Texas Tribune reports Texas officials, including some in the governor's office, knew for months foster children were illegally placed in an unsafe shelter, but the practice didn't end until a whistleblower came forward. Lana Rocha with the Tribune is here to talk about that story and more. Morning, Lana. Good morning, Dave. Uh, what do we know about this story? Yeah, well, back in September, uh, state health officials uh, suspended essentially uh, the Whataburger Center in San Antonio, named uh, after a one-time donation from the uh, fast food chain. Uh, and then in October, uh, the governor's office, those in the governor's office were alerted to the conditions, the fact that this center had had hundreds of complaints uh, and violations uh, filed against it uh, in a matter of years related to abuse and neglect. Uh, in January, it uh, handed over its license and kids were still being placed there. And it wasn't until March when a whistleblower came forward and reported it to uh, court-appointed watchdogs uh, that uh, the court was notified of the, uh, the situation and kids were finally removed, not necessarily moved to uh, safe places. They were said to be sleeping in offices last month and, and things like that. We did not get a comment uh, from the governor's office. We reached out and they declined. And then state health officials cited the pending litigation uh, for not commenting on the situation. Mm, certainly a story to keep an eye on there. Uh, in other news, we've got a Texas congressman who may be uh, about to make a run for Liz Cheney's old position within the Republican Party. Yeah, Austin Republican Chip Roy uh, on a radio uh, talk show this morning. He was saying that, you know, he's going to be working a lot today. Uh, he just thinks that uh, Representative Elise Stefanik, a uh, Republican out of New York, uh, who's all but certain to take Cheney's spot. Uh, she's a staunch supporter of the former president. She's received his endorsement. Um, but he thinks there should be a contest and it, not a coronation. And so he's looking and, and discussing with, um, you know, members of the delegation and uh, of the caucus to see exactly how this is going to shake out. But she has a lot of support. And again, the endorsement of the former president is uh, pretty huge. Yeah, that's a steep hill for, for the congressman to climb there. We'll keep an eye on that. Yep. Also, uh, you got the story of a, a Texas town where vaccination rates are going up, even as that is not the case statewide. Yeah, in uh, northeast uh, Texas, about two hours from Dallas, uh, Mount Pleasant in Titus County uh, doubled its uh, vaccination rate uh, in a month. It's, uh, it's a town that was particularly hit hard uh, by the coronavirus. That's about a 40 percent uh, Hispanic population, uh, and people in those communities have been uh, hesitant to get the vaccine, thinking maybe uh, they need to show proof of citizenship. They do not. Uh, and so uh, they the city, along with the help of state officials, have uh, stepped up uh, vaccination rates by putting people, um, you know, who look like them, essentially. Uh, state health officials have placed uh, people of Latin descent from Puerto Rico, Honduras, Mexico in the clinic. So when people come in to get the shot, they can talk to people, uh, you know, in their communities who can vouch for the safety and efficacy of the vaccine. They've also uh, leaned on churches and uh, nonprofits in order to, uh, you know, get the uh, the shot in the arms and of course the uh, increased supply has definitely helped rural communities yeah, absolutely that has but as we've seen not just in the state but in other places that doesn't mean people are necessarily taking advantage of it with more shots in there so that's really good stuff to see yeah no it's uh, good news in that town all right real quick uh, I, know, I know we got to go but uh, you're already working on the details of the texas tribune fest for this year yeah, September 20th through the 25th. It'll be virtual right now, but we're monitoring the situation to see what, if any, in-person events we can have. So September 20th through the 25th, uh, the Texas Tribune Festival, our 11th year. It's and bigger and bigger every year. When you say you're monitoring right now, I know that that work every goes year. on 365 days a year on that festival. It starts so the day after the last <laughs> sure. one. Yep, you're right. That continues. All right, Alana Rocha from Texas Tribune. Thanks so much for everything, Alana. We'll see you later. Thank you.